Anterior Total Hip Replacement Discharge class. In this video, we are going to talk about all of the things that you will need to know about how to care for yourself whenever you get home from an anterior total hip replacement. Activity after a hip replacement is very important. We encourage you to take short walks every hour. Always walk with your walker or cane. Do not walk on uneven surfaces. Climbing stairs. Climbing upstairs with the good leg first and downstairs with the bad leg first. You can remember up with the good and down with the bad. Set in chairs that have arms, backs, and firm seats. Do not set in low or soft chairs. Cough and deep breathe frequently. Use your incentive spirometer or your breathing machine 10 times every hour while you're awake. Your nurse should give you your incentive spirometer before you're discharged from the hospital. Continue your range of motion exercises. Remember, motion is lotion. Do not drive until you ask your surgeon for permission to drive. Do not drive while taking your prescription pain medication and do not resume sexual activity until discussed with your surgeon. Other helpful tips on moving. Make sure that you avoid extreme extension. Extension is when you are walking and your operative leg is behind you. It's important that when you're walking, you do not take large steps. Now let's talk about the restrictions that you have when you're moving. You can see the pictures on the screen to help you understand things that you should avoid whenever you are moving after a hip replacement. When you are on your back, you can lift your hips a little, but do not lift your hips all the way up. You can walk normally, but do not take large steps. Ice therapy after a hip replacement. Ice therapy is a valuable tool to reduce pain and swelling after an injury or surgery. When your skin is cold, the blood vessels constrict or shrink, helping to reduce swelling at the site. Cold therapy may be done with ice packs or with a bag of frozen peas. We suggest the use of a store-bought gel pack because it will not leak and it tends to stay colder longer. Oftentimes they come in sleeves that form to your joint. To get the most benefit out of your ice therapy, we recommend that you keep your ice on for 20 minutes and then remove your ice for 20 minutes. Always place a pillowcase or a clean towel between your skin and the ice pack. If you have decreased feeling in an area, please use extra caution when using ice packs. We recommend that you set a timer so that you do not forget to remove your ice pack. Now we're going to talk about how to take care of your surgery site. You will keep the bandage on that you are discharged from the hospital with. This bandage is waterproof, meaning that you are able to get in the shower with this bandage on. Look at your bandage every day. Please see the pictures below. If three of the four borders of your bandage have drainage on them, please call your surgeon's office. Do not apply ointment or lotion anywhere near your bandage. And remember, swelling and bruising around your side of surgery can be normal after surgery. What are reasons that you should notify your surgeon after surgery? If you have a temperature of 102 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, if you have drainage from your incision, especially pus or drainage that has an odor, if you have redness with warmth around your incision, if you have chest congestion, if you have calf pain or increased swelling in your legs, if you have increased hip pain, if you have dizziness or confusion, if you have blood in your stool or urine, or if you fall or hurt the side that you had surgery on. You should go to the nearest emergency room if you have chest pain, shortness of breath, or difficulty breathing. Follow-up appointments with your surgeon. It's important that you have your follow-up appointment with your surgeon. Most surgeons like to see their patients within two weeks of being discharged from the hospital. If you do not have a follow-up appointment with your surgeon, please call your surgeon's office. Now let's talk about common medications used after surgery and their side effects. To the right of your screen, you will see a list of medications, the purpose of those medications, and potential side effects that you may experience from taking those medications. 
If you experience any of the side effects listed on this chart, please call your surgeon's office to notify them. Side effects can range from mild to severe. It's important that you communicate any side effects that you're having related to medication use. I do want to talk about your opioid pain medication that you will be taking after surgery. Pain typically peaks after surgery within two to three days. Sometimes you may need to take your full dose of pain medication during that time. Most opioids are prescribed with a range, for example, one or two pills every four to six hours. It's recommended that you start with the lowest dose possible. In this situation, one pill every six hours would be the lower end of your prescription, or two pills every four hours could be the higher end. You may always take less than prescribed. Some patients choose to half their pain pill rather than taking a full pain pill, especially as you begin to feel better. Most surgeons expect their patients to need opioid pain medication occasionally during the first 10 to 14 days after surgery. If you are still requiring opioid medication after that point, please talk to your surgeon. There are state laws in Tennessee about opioids. These laws direct your surgeons on how much pain medication and what pain medication they can prescribe you after surgery. You should also know that university orthopedic surgeons requires a 48 hour notice on all prescription pain medication refills. You must call your surgeon's office Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. to request your medication refill. We do have providers on call at night and on the weekends, but this is for emergencies only. This provider will not be writing pain medication refills for you. If you have questions about your pain medication, please reach out to your nurse navigator. Now I want to talk about constipation after surgery. Constipation is the inability to have a bowel movement. There are several reasons that you can experience constipation after surgery. This includes delayed effects of anesthesia, taking opioid pain medication, being less physically active, and eating and drinking less. We do encourage the use of laxatives after surgery to help with constipation. You can use a stool softener like Colace or a stimulant to help push your bowel through like Dulcolax. If you're unable to have a bowel movement after taking your laxative medications, you can try a suppository. If you're having trouble with your bowel or need some assistance, please do not have it, hesitate to reach out to your nurse navigator. Eating healthy after surgery is important for your healing and overall health. Please review the healthy eating plate that is in your discharge packet. This will talk to you about all of the essential food groups and how to balance your meals. In your discharge packet, you will find tips for how to perform common daily activities such as bathing, showering, getting dressed, and getting in and out of the car. Please let your nurse or therapist know if you have any questions about how to do these things before you're discharged. And lastly, thank you for choosing the University of Tennessee Medical Center. We hope that your experience with us has been excellent. Please let us know if you have any questions or concerns before you leave. If you get home and you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your surgeon's office.